The next few steps should generally be done at least a few hours before the testing begins. Mark locations on the inside of the bell for drilling the inlet port on one side and the exhaust port on the top, where these holes will fall so they are between the primary and secondary gaskets. Holes are then drilled from the inside through the bell for both ports. Next, the end of each tube should be taped or plugged to avoid adhesive getting inside of them. A two-part epoxy sealant is thoroughly mixed and applied to the outside of each of the tubes before they are pushed most of the way through the bell, just short of the inside surface of the bell. Additional epoxy is then applied around each tube to ensure you get a good seal between the tube and the concrete. Once the tubes are set, the tape or plug should be removed from the tubes. The secondary gasket is installed on the spigot section of the corresponding box section. Once the two box sections are homed, this gasket will contain the water within the joint. Note that you must equalize the tension on the gasket. If this is not done, you may not have the same amount of rubber material all around the joint, which means the gasket may not seal properly. Make sure the gasket is pushed against the shoulder of the joint as much as possible. This gasket must then be glued to the spigot using an acceptable adhesive. The adhesive is liberally applied to the bottom surface of the gasket and the concrete where it will rest on all four sides of the spigot. Please note that along the bottom straight section of the joint, the gasket is likely to sag away from the spigot if it is not held in place until the adhesive dries. It is recommended to secure it with a long flat board and a couple of large clamps. Once the secondary gasket is dried enough to remove the clamps and board, the primary gasket, usually a tie lock super seal gasket, is installed on the spigot. The gasket is oriented with the rolling tube facing out towards the end of the spigot and the nose of the gasket firmly against the step of the joint. Just like the secondary gasket, this one must also be equalized and then glued in place on the flat sections of the joint. With this gasket, caution must be exercised to not get adhesive on the rolling tube of the gasket. This could prevent the tube from rolling like it's designed and therefore prevent the gasket from performing properly. Once again, the bottom section of the gasket must be clamped down to ensure it dries tightly against the spigot. Now that the gaskets are secured to the box spigot, it is time to move on to the next stage of testing. The secondary gasket receives a thorough application of lube, which helps the box sections to home as completely as possible. The gasketed spigot is brought closely together with the other section carefully and smoothly. If you are performing deflection testing, something needs to be placed in the joint on one side, like a piece of rebar or wood, to keep it open a half inch more than the other side once homed. The sections are then drawn together using come-along winches or other available devices to adequately hold the box sections together for the duration of the test. The exhaust valve with shutoff is installed on the top tube and tightened completely. Plastic tubing should be attached to the valve to divert the water that comes out of the exhaust port away from the box and joint to prevent the incorrect assumption of a leak. A gauge that allows for attachment of a water source is then installed on the side of the box. This gauge must be accurate for displaying 5 psi of pressure, which is the minimum pressure the gasket and joint should withstand. The inlet pressurizing hose is attached to the gauge valve and then the exhaust valve is open to start the testing process. Sufficient water pressure is then created to force the water into the joint and the valve is opened. Once the water is allowed to enter the joint, it does not take long to completely fill and then flow out of the exhaust port into your plastic tubing. When the water flow out of the exhaust port becomes very steady, turn off that valve. This will allow for pressurizing of the joint. Additional water pressure might be required while the inlet valve is closed. The inlet valve is then reopened. Once the gauge has reached the desired PSI, you should shut off that valve as well and check to ensure the pressure does not drop. A successful test will have no leakage from the primary gasket. You could experience some leakage from the secondary gasket, particularly when the joint is deflected, but this is acceptable provided you're able to maintain the pressure within the joint and find no leakage from the primary gasket.